Welcome to Point of Care Ultrasound Geek. Today we're going to be talking about transvaginal female pelvic anatomy. Um, pel this can be useful both for uh, early pregnancy or gynecological ultrasound. It is the technique I use on a daily basis to make sure I'm not missing things as I've said before in other videos. Uh, use the same scanning technique. Do it the same way every time so you don't miss something and forget about something. Uh, the way I've seen people make mistakes before is they go in, they see a pathological structure, or they see what they think is a intrauterine pregnancy, they get some quick measurements and they're done, and that's where they miss things or misdiagnose the location of a pregnancy or similar. And over the years as I've taught this, I've really um, understood that you need to do this the same way every time. So whatever your technique is, that's great. Um, however, this is, I'm going to show you the way I do it so that hopefully we're not missing things and, and can provide better care to our patients. So, so we're going to pick an endocavitary probe. Um, this is a high frequency probe, which means that we're going to see structures really well, but we're not going to see very deep into the pelvis. Fortunately, it has a large viewing window, even though it looks like it has a small footprint at the top that's kind of wrapped around the tip of the probe. And that allows us to be about see about 180 degrees, which is great for uh, looking in the pelvis. Now, of note, our probe marker is on top of the probe, and it's just a little bump. I didn't take a picture of that, but you can see it's pointed to that area. And what we have here is we have an area that, when I'm talking to my learners and in the room with them scanning, I'll say, well, where's your trigger? Because the trigger is where your index finger should rest. It's not very good, it's right here. So pointing right down at that. That is where your index finger should rest and then your thumb can rest on top. So whenever you're wondering where the probe marker is, you always know where your thumb is and that's, that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna tell you where the probe marker's directed. Now, there's some advantages and disadvantages of using this probe, right? I mentioned these before, is that we can see small structures. So you may see that early pregnancy, you may see that early fetus with a heart rate or just a yolk sac within a gestational sac. It gives us that better resolution to see those small structures. The disadvantages is if there's something that's up outside the pelvis, so say you're talking second trimester or that the, there's an ovary up out of the pelvis, you're not gonna see them. You only get about eight to 10 centimeters of depth uh, with, when scanning with an intracavitary probe, so you're not going to see that deep into the pelvis. And so you can't see a large structure or a, a structure outside of the pelvis. So just keep that in mind. I always personally will do a trans-abdominal approach first, or trans-abdominal scan first, and then if I can't see what I need to, then I will go ahead and do a transvaginal. So this is just revert, reviewing the anatomy. We see the pubic bone there. And just superior to that is going to rest your bladder um, and then the uterus above that. Now of note, you want to make sure that bladder is nice and empty because unfortunately, like we said before, the intercavitary probe is not going to see deep into the pelvis. So if the bladder is full and pushing that uterus up and away from you, you're not going to be able to see it. So some of the keys to this, like I said, is have them empty that bladder. So I do the transabdominal approach first if I don't see what I need to and I need to do a transvaginal, then I have them go urinate and empty their bladder completely, and then I go ahead and do a transvaginal. If I'm doing a pelvic exam, I'll do that right before I do the, the transabdominal or the transvaginal ultrasound. Now also, keep in mind that that probe marker initially, you're gonna aim that towards the ceiling because our first view we're gonna wanna get is a uh, uterus long axis. When I teach my learners, I like to teach them to have a clean hand and a dirty hand. So what do I mean by that? Well, you've got to have a, a hand that's down near the perineum controlling the probe, you know, moving it around. And then you've got to have a hand that's able to keep your, your machine clean, but where you can do your calculations, your measurements, adjust your settings as far as gain and depth and, all, and frequency. And so for me, I, my left hand is my clean hand. I'm right-handed, so I scan with my right hand. Um, so that's going to be my dirty hand. And your, well, the key to this is your dirty hand never touches the machine and your um, clean hand never touches down near the perineum. So when you insert the probe, what I would recommend is that you put the foot, the tip of the probe right on the posterior portion of the vaginal intruitus 
push down just a little bit and then lift the teleprobe and advance and that should get you in without causing any discomfort to the patient. When we look at the uterus long axis, um, so this is a coronal view, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut it in a long axis like we see here with this uh, dotted line, and that's what we want to end up getting. So what our initial image will look like is something to this effect. Now your uterus does not always lie in midline. It can be angled off to the side, and you could scan them once and come back and scan them later, and it's going to be oriented different. This is a free-floating structure somewhat, um, and so you got to pay attention to that it's not just midline go find this image you want to find the uterus in a long axis with the fundus as we see here and really follow that endometrial stripe all the way down to the cervix now remember if you're only seeing portion of the endometrial line use a rotation or a fan and you can lengthen this out and get this type of image so here's a live still image of that same same uh, drawing pretty much and we can see our fundus up here in our endometrial line and our endometrial line is just coming right down through there. Now, if we look at this, we don't see, we cannot see the cervix over in here, over towards this side of the screen. So we see that endometrial line disappear. And all you have to do, because this is a, this is anterior, this is posterior, you just lift the tail of the probe up and look posterior and you'll be able to see the cervix and you'll get a view like this. And what we can see here, is that the endometrial line is continued right here come up along there here's the posterior portion of the cervix and here's the anterior portion this is just a fan through so what I like to do is I find that initial view I save an image personally um, and then I fan over to the patient's right fan and slowly fan towards their left and I look mostly at the fundus here initially and I'm going to just pay attention if there's any structures in the uterus that I can see or if there's anything outside the uterus that I can see I'm looking for both normal and abnormal findings, but mostly I'm just defining the anatomy initially. If I can't find this, I don't have this in this video, but then you'd angle back, look at the cervix, and do the same. Now, after I fan through it once, I come back over to the right slowly again, giving me a second chance to look for any pathology or normal findings, and then I fan back through, and this time I'm going to save about five to six images. And I would do the same thing over the cervix. I usually do two to three images in that space. Now, here we're going to see an example of a retroverted uterus. And this is what it will look like uh, if we have that. Now, remember that the probe marker is towards the ceiling. And so this in red is our anterior. And this in blue would be posterior. And you don't need to go rotating your probe around or moving any of that. That is just simply to say that this is a retroverted uterus. Just make sure your probe marker's up, and it's okay that it doesn't look like that classic drawing I have up in the right-hand corner. This is a normal structure. This is just means you have a retroverted uterus. Now we're going to do imaging in the short axis. So just like we did with transabdominal, we're going to image. We finished imaging in the lock axis, then we're going to find it in the short axis. And what I like to do is I like to find the fundus in this view, identify that endometrial stripe, and then I like to fan through it from there. So we're just going to go to a real-time image, or a real image, and we have that nice, bright, hyperechoic endometrial stripe surrounded by a hypoechoic to anechoic structure. And that's your entire endometrium. And then we have our fundus around there, and we can just see that nice oval shape. Now what I do from here is I fan up to the top of the fundus, and then I slowly fan down through to the cervix. This video doesn't quite make it to the cervix in this four-second clip. But then I would continue down and I would see all that. Then I personally fan back up to the top and then that allows me a second time to check out my anatomy, make sure I see what's normal and what's abnormal. And then I go through and I save about five to six images and I do this all the way down through the cervix. Now we're going to get to the part, another part that's probably the more difficult portion of this is just finding your ovaries. Now, it's not always possible. Uh, even great sonographers are going to struggle. Bow gas gets in the way. You don't always find these. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to limit or um, identify what we can and watch for any other abnormal structures. One thing to mention here is I like to come back to this fundus view that we had before, and I like to start here. This is where I have the most success. I stay in a short axis uh, when I'm looking at the fundus, and then I just 
angle over towards my right and my left to image, looking for that at an exit. Now, of note, right here on this view, sometimes if we have an anterior verted uterus, we can see our ovaries here, and that's pretty normal. And I, if I do that, I'm going to look for pathology in this area because that's going to be our adnexa. Now remember, we shouldn't see the fallopian tubes. If we do, that's typically abnormal. But we want to look for any structures, whether that fallopian tube is identifiable or adnexal masses. Now, again, our other ovary, an ovary can be out in here, and we'd look at this space in between. So let me take that off. And that's what we're going to mostly focus on is just those ovaries out in the adnexa. Now remember, you can't have them posterior. I have seen them anterior on retroverted uteruses, so just pay attention to that. Now here, what we see is we see the internal iliac vessel on the right, our ovary, and then our uterus. Now remember, our probe marker is directed towards the right. So this right now is right, and this right now is left. Okay, so we're going to take that off real quick. Now, of a note, is the internal iliac vessel sits just adjacent to your pelvic wall. And so you should not see your ovaries out in this area out here. You just shouldn't see that. They should lie medial to your internal iliac vessels, just like we see here. So we see you, going left to right, we have our what we would be our pelvic brim, and then we have our internal iliac vein. We see our ovary, which often has the characteristics of what people describe as a chocolate chip cookie, has hypoechoic areas with anechoic cysts or structures within it. And then we can see our uterus. And I like to usually keep the uterus in view just so I can uh, keep my orientation here well. Now this is a, the same image with the drawings taken off. And we see that hypoechoic ovary, which is right here in red. And then we can see our vessel right in there. Now, where I would be looking for pathology not, is not only around the ovary, but right in here between the uterus and the ovary. And we'd be looking for adnexal masses, being able to identify that fallopian tube, whatever it may be. But remember, initially, we're just looking to identify anatomy, make sure we know what's going on. Now, if we look over towards the left in this, so we just take and we angle over um, towards the patient's left, we can see in this image, we can see an ovary with a big cyst on it. And I'll do that in red here. So here's our ovary. And then laying just adjacent to it, you see those iliac vessels again right there, that anechoic to hypoechoic structure. Take that off so you can see that again. And that, once again, I'm going to look in this area for any pathology. And obviously, I've been paying attention throughout the scan to look for pathology, but that's going to help us most to understand uh, whether we have adnexal masses or whether we're seeing the fallopian tubes and are concerned about pathology there. Now, if we're doing this for pregnancy, we this is when I go back and I evaluate for, pre, for where, well, I've already identified where it's located, um, but this is where I go back and I would evaluate it. Now, we're going to go back just to identify where we would want to see that pregnancy. Now, what we would see is we'd want to see that pregnancy right in there. Let me take that off. That's not a good color on that. So let's do a blue. That'll stand up better. So right up here in the uterine fundus within the endometrial canal is where we would want to see that pregnancy. So in our long axis, we'd go back and we could look at this in this view, and we'd try to identify the structures in it. Now, like I said, this, the point of this one is not the pregnancy, necessarily pregnancy ultrasound, but we'd want to look for an anechoic structure, which could represent a gestational sac, and then a small, bright cheerio within that, uh, which would represent a yolk sac, or even maybe a fetus. But this is the area we want to see it. If we don't see it anywhere but there, we need to get concerned either is this a miscarriage or is this in the wrong location. And then same thing, so that's our, our regular video. We'd want to see right down along that endometrial stripe. And then in the fundus, we'd want to see it sit right in here, right in that endometrium. Those are typical spots. If we're getting too located to one side, you got to get worried about interstitial pregnancies. There's no good definition. It used to say that if there was less than five millimeters of wall, that you would have to be concerned about that. Um, but that's been questioned in some, some areas. Um, so I would just make sure you're right along that endometrium. 
And if you're not certain, remember you can still ask for that consultative ultrasound. But at least in this one, we can get an idea of where our structure should be. So once again, it's just going to be right along that endometrial endometrium right there where we'd want to see that. So that concludes our discussion of transvaginal ultrasound. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below or send me an email um, at uh, pocusgeek.gmail.com. Um, and I uh, hope to see you back sometime.